Fellow member has Mr. Flicker. The current office bearers under local council one and local council two are in office and their term of office expires on the 10th of July this year. The challenge is a finance challenge, but we'll provide the necessary guidance and we'll ensure that the LOC chairpersons remain working um, with the necessary guidance. We'll provide that early next week. We require 59 billion to conduct LOC and the Women Council elections, which money we don't have in the budget. The LC1s and LC2s chairpersons together with the executives, their term of office is five years. Whereas it's worse for the women councils, their term of office is four years. As we talk now, the women councils are, are over five years. To make matters worse, we are wondering why can't government prioritize the elections of these councils, these administrative units. For somebody at the LC1 level, not to have a chairperson who is in the law or under the law, I think it is, it is appalling and a shaming and our people, you know, they're not going to trust us anymore because if we get elected into power and the LC ones are not elected into power, what, 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 what does that mean? It means we are lowering the standards of the lower local governments. Uh, it is very illegal and uh, it endangers and hinders the human rights of citizens who would want to become leaders in this country. Because this is as a democratic country, we need to go through an electoral process. But this is a violation of the right to our people. People should rise up under Article 29. It's mandatory. They can rise up and show their dissatisfaction. Because it's their mandate. It's their right to have able leaders. It's their right to vote uh, every, after five years. The supplemental question is not provided for under this time.